we'll see how this goes. My uh, housing development's lovely noisemakers that they call landscapers are back again because it's actually a nice day and I'd love to sit out on my patio, but instead I get to breathe in the fumes of the leaf blower when, once again, there are no leaves. So, anyhow, America. Uh, I would like to talk a little bit today about an upcoming game I have planned. I am working on uh, trying to put together an open table. This is something I have never done before. An open table game of Dungeon Crawl Classics. And as I started to put that together, oh, and I am enjoying this Soul Boxer brandy old fashioned. Mm, quite tasty. Ah, yeah. So, in doing some preparation for this and doing a little bit of research, I found, you know, there's lots of recommendations for what to do. One of the recommendations, and this is for the Sandbox game, this is for um, West Marches, etc., etc., and, and it's for starting campaigns in fantasy games anyway, generally. And that is to come up with your uh, home base, your central town, um, your local area, as I think it is uh, Matt Colville had mentioned, your local area. And I'm looking to have some work done for me on details and things like that, but I'm also making it my own. So last year, I ran for a friend a test game of Dungeon Crawl Classics using the e Dungeons & Dragons starter set and essentials kit versions of their town, Phandalin, uh, in Dragon of Ice, Spire Peak, and Lost Minds of Phandelder. Those are the two scenarios that use Phandalin, and the Phandalin map, which I have sitting here. And I thought it worked pretty well. I think there's a lot of potential in Phandalin and a lot of cool adventure seeds. It gives you a a hub where you can take missions from different people and go out into the surrounding area. There are plenty of, in both cases, especially if you sort of strip out some of the uh, ongoing storyline aspects of Lost Minds of Phandelver and mix the individual beats in as missions or whatever and mix them in with these, I think that it could work as things to go out and take care of in the various areas around Phandalin. Uh, so, I thought it worked pretty well. It had some cool ideas. There were things that I came across, things that people have brought up in videos and reviews about, for example, Lost Minds of Phandelver. Things like the Black Spider has, uh, for a big bad in your, theoretically, uh, your, your campaign or your chunk of a campaign, there's almost no development of the Black Spider, who the Black Spider is, what they're really doing. Yeah, they want this thing, but what does it do? Why do they want it? How, you know, it, it's, there's a, not a lot there. You, you are responsible for making a lot of that up. Fine. Uh, so, yeah, that's the way it is. So anyway, Dragon of Ice Spire Peak and Lost Minds of Phandelver will serve somewhat as the basis for my home, town, small, local area. Uh, I hear the noisemakers coming back, so this may be fun. Uh, I figure, though, that I will begin the game with uh, Portal Under the Stars, which is a very short uh, scenario for Dungeon Crawl Classics, a funnel, zero level, you're meant to go in with a whole bunch of characters, and they get butchered as they go through the relatively small map. It's pretty straightforward, but it has a lot of really cool twists and turns in it. I, I like this scenario a lot. I've now run it twice, once successfully. Um, once didn't work out, but that's for other reasons. Um, I played in it once as well. And I think that it's a cool scenario. I think it's a great starting thing. And I, I think it's a good hot start for a campaign. You know, throw people in. Uh, anyway. I will definitely be starting. Any characters will always start at zero level. I think that that's a great way to do it for Dungeon Crawl Classics. And I think that, kind of like in the way they used to do, I think you would run a stable of characters. So, you know, you may have 
you may have like one of your characters who's survived a funnel and done all this sort of thing, and they've made it all the way up to like level three or level four. But you know, at some point, if you're just one character at level three, level four, well, you probably want to start uh, four zero level characters, run them through some adventures, narrow those down to one or two characters that get up to first level. You know, so you have a few characters around, especially if you get a base of operations, blah blah blah. So. Fandolin will be the, the town, but there are problems I have with Fandolin. Uh, for example, and I don't know, actually, I think it'll be easier if I show you on this map. Towns, in general, are built up along rivers and coastlines. That's a typical sort of thing. Well, if you can see on here, Fandolin is right here. There's no river, there's no coastline. When you look at the map of the village, there's no stream there's really nothing. Uh, why would this town be built there? And I got thinking about that, and it bothered me. And this is one of those things that I'll get a little bee in my bonnet about things. It's it's one of the reasons why the world that my novel takes place in exists. It's because I was bothered by the way fantasy settings had all of these various species and peoples and all living together and warring and all this sort of thing, but with no sense of how they got there, why they're there, what evolution worked, how are there 50 different sentient species on one small planet, you know, that sort of thing. It bothered me. And I know that obviously the answer is magic. Magic did it. Great, fine. But that always really bugged me. And so I started approaching things of why these people are where they are. And that became setting. Anyway, back to this. It's okay that it's magic did it because I'm going dungeon call classics. It's going to be wild. There are literal gods walking around. It's it's okay that magic did it. But why would you build a town here? Yes, it's close to where there were some mines. Okay, sure. But why here? Why in this spot? So I got thinking about water. And I got thinking about the fact that there must be a good water source here. We don't have a stream, so what do we have? Well, what about a really good well? And maybe a deep kind of a, a well, springs, there's mountains nearby, springs in the mountain. And that got me thinking about hot springs, which got me thinking about tourist places. So I got to thinking about Fandolin, which I've turned to call, um, what am I calling it? Clear Springs? I've changed the name to Clear Springs. And Clear Springs was built here because there is a, a spring. There's, there are mountain springs here. Probably magic in some way, so maybe there's some reason why they are better than other springs. But the town is built up around a central sort of a well. And I think uh, what I'm looking at too is, is, you know, we've got the Stone Hill Inn that's supposed to be a, a, an integral part of Fandolin. But it's, it's just like one owner owner's partner, owner's kid, the end, and they run the thing. Well, that seems a little lackluster. So I, I was watching a, a video, and I, I can't remember what it's called, so I'll, I'll try to remember to link it down below at some point. But uh, it was about making better towns and making better inns and ta better taverns and that sort of thing. And it got to talking about the, the complexities of a tavern and the services that a tavern might offer and that an inn might offer and why you might have an inn and a tavern as a combined Thing. And that got me thinking about inns and uh, schools and housing complexes in martial arts movies. And that got me also thinking about the old uh, villas and that sort of thing in uh, the Roman times. And I was looking at floor plans and actually the, the, the house compounds in uh, sort of medieval China and the villas in... Uh, Rome had some similarities in the way that they were built and, and, and what they did. It made sense. You're, you're housing a family. It's sort of inside walls, blah, 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 blah. And I got thinking, what if the Stone Hill Inn, which I've changed to the Clear Springs, uh, or the Spring Hill Inn, where the Spring Hill Inn is a much more intricate and important complex. It's not just an innkeep their spouse, their child, running this sort of thing in a, in a frontier village. No, this is a this is an inn and tavern. This is a 
a beer hall. This is where everybody in town goes every night because it's cheaper to go get your food at this place than to try to run a stove at your own house after you've just done a work in the farm and all that sort of thing. So this is going to be the central hub of the community. This is where the whole community comes together every night. This is where, yes, it's where people come in when they're traveling, but it's also where the locals stay. And it's going to be a central part of the life in Clear Springs. Uh, and it has access to Clear Springs. So it will have this fresh water. Through that, you know, there are other services that it offers, and there's money made. It's a place to exchange. It's a place to get jobs. It's all this sort of thing. So that also then made me think, too, of still about the hot springs. And, I, you know, you probably didn't have the hot springs here in the town. The inn didn't necessarily build up around the hot springs. But the inn, the owners of the inn own uh, or have laid claim to hot springs out in the foothills of the, whatever they're called, Ice Fire Mountain or whatever they're called. Uh, so they, they have claims to that. So they ship, they take people out there and maybe people stay in little chalets or whatever out at these hot springs, probably wealthy visitors from the big city, they come in and they stay there and and they, they take their healing and all of that sort of thing. But that means that they need guards, that means that they need a caravan back and forth, uh, all sorts of things uh, that, the, that that then demands people make, which means jobs for PCs to pick up or uh, problems to happen for PCs to go solve. Oh, somebody raided the, the chalet. Well, we've got to go take care of, you know, that kind of thing. So there's a lot of story beats that can go on in there. Anyway, I reworked a bunch of that. Started working on factions. There were things like the Black Spider, who I just did not particularly care for the way the Black Spider was handled in Lost Mine of Fandelver. So I got reworking the, the Black Spider, thinking of them more as a... Like an old movie serial villain, where it is probably somebody who is a power player in the town who masquerades as the Black Spider, manipulating people and doing things, and it's a matter of unmasking that person. Which then makes me think, too, more about the, uh, the doppelgangers that are supposed to be involved, and I got to thinking about how I might use the doppelgangers, maybe even not even associated with the Black Spider, as it is in Lost Mine of Um uh, But I thought about factions, and I thought about the, the Black Spider being sort of a faction leader, but probably an individual manipulator. Like, they're there doing things for their own wants and desires. Not necessarily, they might play a group off another group or use a group to do something, but not necessarily as any kind of uh, hierarchical thing with a group. You know, not they're not the leader of anything. Uh, but then you have, like, Glassstaff, the wizard. And I definitely think I want to use Glassstaff as kind of a um, a level boss. You know, they're they're not necessarily the first big bad that you face, but maybe the second or something like that. And that Glassstaff is kind of the, the real leader of a faction. And so you find out about the faction, you take down the faction, you take down Glassstaff. Okay. Uh, but they'll, they will be a, a obvious villain. Where I think the Black Spider is going to be a little bit more on the edge. Are they a villain? Could they be an ally? Um you know, that might be up to how the players go about things. But Glassstaff, I think, is going to be a villain. And, uh, you know, think about things like the Red Brands, and I want to use the Red Brands as this gang. Um, and there are going to be... I've also got a, a Necromancer, which was a character I brought in, uh, this, this uh, dinosaur man Necromancer that I brought in for the game that I ran, and I want that to be another villain, probably a step up from Glassstaff, because I think that that the, oh boy, they're really making some noise outside my window. So I really think that the Necromancer could be a good big bad because they will have control over a lot of undead in the area. And I do want undead to be a major player in the game. Uh, I'm going to have the orcs and make them a little bit more, uh, less villains, less monsters. The orcs are going to be more, uh, probably refugees. And that got me thinking about things because I got thinking about going beyond the village to your local area. And I don't know how much this map is going to show up on camera. Probably not. Well, oh, better than I thought. Uh, so I've got 
the town here and these mountains here. And that got me thinking about, well, what's beyond the mountains but a big glacier here, okay, and beyond them another mountain. So what might that mean? As I was putting these things in, I got to think about how on the glacier there might be this Dungeon Crawl Classic scenario waiting to happen. And if that's waiting to happen, then what if beyond that, the barrier peaks are waiting? So the second mountain chain beyond the glacier may be the barrier peaks. If you've got the barrier peaks and you've got this, and you have orcs that have been fleeing and they're living in the mountains, and then they're pushed out by something in the Ice Fire Peak storyline, uh, then what if they are refugees from the things that had happened there? So they were living out on the glacier, they things came out of the barrier peaks and drove them off. I'm also thinking about throwing this one in as a potential side adventure to introduce the idea of some of the weirder, techie kind of stuff. Because I do like the idea of blending in the, the genres, which is, feels so right for that area. So, for that era, for the era I'm trying to capture in this game. So, yeah. You know, again, with this map, that allows me to do some stuff over here. And I've put in some other, I've seeded in some other classic scenarios, like uh, if they travel down this way, uh, it would head off to, uh, what's the name of it? Uh, or Lane. It looks like Oakham because my handwriting is terrible. Uh, but I also have the, uh, right here, I have the town from the Dungeon Crawl Classic scenario, uh, Shadow Under Devil's Reef which is basically uh, Shadow over Innsmouth. The H.P. Lovecraft story turned into a DCC scenario. I have seated in there, again, Orlane from Cult of the Reptile God, Salt Marsh from Sinister Secret of Salt Marsh, uh, Herot from uh, Doom of the Savage Kings is in there. I also have on the map, it's quite a ways away, and so chances of characters getting to it are not necessarily strong at this time, but that could still happen. Uh, there's Homlet from Village of Homlet in the Temple of Elemental Evil. I don't know if I'll work that in or not. And then I've got the coastline nearby, it means that there can be islands out here, so I have written down Stormwreck Isle from the uh, newer starter set, but also... The idea that you could go off to the island from Moon Slaves of the Cannibal Kingdom or Monkey Island. And also at some point could work in Treasure Hunt as well. Especially if people are looking for some first level characters to bring in with a more nautical side of things. But that's all sort of contained in this general hex map. That's all stuff that could be found in here. I have some other scenarios that I thought about adding in, and uh, certainly some that are a little less location-specific, but would fit with the locations that I have mapped in there so far. I have a lot of different factions. Uh, I've, got, I've been working on some rumor tables, taking some of the rumors from these various scenarios and, and putting them onto a rumor table together. One thing that I have decided at least to start... And this, this is where things can get controversial. You know, you've already got uh, Dungeon Crawl Classics goes back to the old thing of the uh, race class. I don't like using the word race, but, you know, race class thing, you know, where there are uh, humans who can be the various different classes, cleric, fighter, whatever. And then you have halfling is a class. Elf is a class. Dwarf is a class. Okay. And I'm good with that. I'm going to keep that in this, in this case. But I also was thinking just about, like, I, I want my elves and my dwarves to really be interesting and unique and different. And so I got this idea that the dwarves, which I've, I've taken another name, I went into some mythology stuff and I was poking around and finding some different names for groups, and I, I can't remember what I called them. I have the name here somewhere, but um, basically that that the uh, that the dwarves are made from rock. They are descended from like magical beings of rock, like elementals or something like that. And I have the idea that dwarves and gnomes are 
two different names for two different sort of sub species, if you will, of things where the dwarves are really all about stone and rock and all of that. And the gnomes are all about metal, but otherwise they're basically the same. So if you're, um, if at some point you wanted to play a, a dwarf or, or a gnome, or you would just say, you know, what, do you want to focus on metal? Do you want to focus on stone? It's going to be the same stat block. It doesn't matter. It's literally just a, de a designation based on the type of thing. And then I got to think like, you know, what's the deal with elves? What am I going to come up with with elves? I, I, I don't want to just do, you know, what I, I want to do something interesting. So I got to think about, okay. Well, what if they are more crystal-based? Because I had rock and I had metal. I'm like, oh, what about crystal? I didn't want to do plants. I didn't want to do the rune quest thing. Uh, so I was like, what about crystal? Fine. And that got me thinking more about, I like the idea of other worlds and things like that. So, and I also like the idea of elves not being this like high and mighty sort of thing, but, but being sort of sinister and weird. And so I thought like, okay, they're crystals. They're from another realm, another world or whatever. They came here a long time ago and dominated the world. And they did horrible things. A la the Melnibabans. Mel I, I can't say the word. You know what I mean. From Elric. Those guys. Uh, no, I'm not going to be able to say it today. Um, so I got to think about them. These, these people who were in power and power corrupted them to just a shocking degree, so that they were real monsters. And they ruled the world with this monstrous thing, and they did horrible things, and probably led to a sort of Dark Age downfall of the world. And so now, thousands of years later, are hated. And they're still hated, even after all this time. This, this, people don't even really remember why they hate them so much. There's all these reasons, but are they the real reason, or is it just excuses people find to hate people who are different. And that is what it is. But there is this, like, that they once upon a time, they're not the perfectly fine people now, but once upon a time, they they did this awful thing. And uh, uh, then I got thinking, too, about, you know, how would we set up? I like the idea, especially if doing a West March and Sandbox kind of game, about being, and this Fandolin, which is now, Clear Springs being a frontier town. Why is it a frontier? Because the world is just coming out of this horrendous time. So thinking about like a millennia-long dark age of horror, kind of like your Earth Dawn, where for a long time these like Lovecraftian monsters or whatever ruled the world. And a few generations back, something happened. They've gone away, mostly, maybe, sort of, and people have emerged again, and they're going out and trying to retake the, the wild, weird world that they're finding. Uh, that'll allow a lot of ancient stuff, but also a lot of, like, discovering it anew now, because for a thousand years it's been dominated by these, these horrible monsters. Uh, and that also plays into an idea for an urban game that I at some point want to run, uh, I'm calling it the last city right now, and it's the idea that that during that long dark, people held up in this one city that was protected by uh, sleeping gods. It doesn't matter, but it was protected so people could survive in there. And all kinds of people came in and lived there. You had goblins living there. You had um, elves and dwarves and all those people. You know, rat folk, of course, because you can't have a city without rat folk. Uh, you know, and and they all lived in this place in tenuous peace, uh, sort of, with a lot of crime and all that sort of thing. But they lived in this place for, you know, a thousand years, uh, barely escape, barely getting out from, from there. Blah, 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 blah. But that place is the big city that's off in the distance. So when people are talking about, you know, somebody's coming in from the city, they're coming from there. That place has been sending people out for the last hundred or so years to start to find out what's going on in the world. And it turns out, out there, there have been pockets of other people who did hold on during that time. The orcs living out on the glaciers, and uh, other people who managed to eke out a living during this long period of darkness. So I think it'll be a rich ground to pull a lot of classic fantasy tropes out of, uh, and, and, and allow people to have fun 
exploring, but also building. They'll have a reason why they're building things. Why do I want to make world the world better out here? Because I'm going out into this frontier and I'm you know, building a, a civilization, I'm building a community, I'm finding remnants of the old stuff to take in and, and, and you know, make our own and make the world better. Uh, so that's where I'm at with this right now. It's still in kind, I don't want to say preliminary stages, like I think I'm actually ready to run my first session and I will build from there. It, I don't even know if I'm going to get four people to play much less 10, 12, 15, or 20, which is actually what I'm kind of hoping for because I'd like to do various groups and, and do invites to people and have them come in and play for a week and go off and do something and then maybe a different a collection of people playing, you know, to explore the area and to write, you know, synopsis of what they've done so that other people can look at it and say, oh, you guys bought a dragon out there and and it drove you off well, man these three guys and myself well, we could probably take that dragon they'll go and find out what's going on there that's that's the kind of basic idea sort of again like the west marches or like the sandbox that kind of thing we'll see we'll see if uh, i get any interested parties as of right now this area that I live in, the gaming community that is here seems to be primarily D&D and Pathfinder focused. I'm hoping maybe DCC will be close enough that there can be some overlap of interest. And uh, we'll see. I've just missed face-to-face -face gaming and I'm really hoping to get some in in 2023. That's my, uh, that's my goal. So I guess that's it for me right now. If you have questions, let me know. I may do some more videos about this. Maybe try to get into the specifics of some of the stuff I'm doing. I don't know. And I may try to do some blog entries or something or put something up on my Patreon. I'm not sure. As usual, you know, hey, you know, like and support and all of the usual stuff. Check out my links below if you'd like. Um, there you go. You know how it works. Well, take care and we'll see what my next video is on.